можем начинать. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, it's our capital. It's our small and mid-cap conference. Uh, probably this is our actually uh, concluding Zoom uh, in our conference. Uh, so far, we had uh, 27 corporates and lots of clients from across the world. Uh, today, we are speaking with um, uh, Nexters, um, a relative newcomer in the Russian in the Russian market. Uh, we will, I think, we'll start with a quick intro. I will ask a company to uh, to talk about itself. Uh, just in case you know people are not you know sufficiently familiar with it yet, and then we'll host a Q&A session. Uh, in order to ask a question, you can just raise your hand or uh, send a question to the chat room. Uh, let's maybe start with a quick intro of our last company, uh, the company to, to discuss its investment story. And with this, I would like to uh, pass the floor um, to the company CEO, Andrei Fadiev, if possible. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mikhail. Uh, I'm Andrei Fadiev, uh, CEO and uh, co-founder of Nexters. Uh, we made Hero Wars. I think all of you saw our advertisement. And uh, next, our story. Uh, the story of Nexters uh, dates to 2010, uh, when my co-founder Boris and I uh, first met. Uh, later, we decided to focus uh, to, 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 to focus uh, our forces and join our forces under Nextors brand. And uh, today, Nextors is a top five European mobile uh, game developer. We are now a sizable business with uh, $443 million of bookings in 2020, which has seen uh, 10x uh, bookings growth over the last uh, two years. As a result of our effective business model, we've been historically profitable and generated substantial uh, operating cash flow of $121 million in 2020. We launched our first games in 2013 and 14, and our current uh, blockbuster Hero Wars in 16. All of those, these are award-winning games uh, with loyal players and uh, strong cohort uh, economics. In 2018, founders of Playrix, I think you know it's Gardenscapes and uh, Homescapes, uh, which is world's number two mobile game developer, uh, acquired a stake in Nexters and uh, brought additional uh, expertise and knowledge. Uh, this helped us to change focus from uh, social to mobile uh, games, after which our business uh, underwent enormous uh, growth. Today, we are well diversified across uh, key platforms and geographies, as we know how to localize and adapt uh, content for local needs and uh, be efficient uh, across various uh, markets. Our largest market now is U.S., uh, but we are also very strong in Asia, uh, Europe, and the former Soviet Union uh, countries. Russia is approximately 10% of our bookings now. We believe our expertise in user acquisition, uh, content creation, and uh, monetization will allow us to further fuel our growth uh, in existing and new titles. Uh, for 2021, we have uh, three new titles in the pipeline, one of which is uh, already launched. Also, we believe we are well uh, positioned to become uh, a consolidator uh, on the Russian speaking uh, gaming market, which has nearly thousands of independent uh, game development studios as we are uh, the first one in the industry uh, with a public currency, which can be used for M&A uh, financing. So this is our brief overview and uh, let's go to Q&A section. Okay, in order to ask a question, please unmute yourself uh, or you can just send a question to the chat room. <clears throat> we have a third question in the chat room. Um, what is the expected lifetime of existing and new uh, mobile titles? Um, for how long can the company keep monetizing here awards? I think it's actually it's a, one of the most frequently asked questions about the company, by the way. 
Anton, please, uh, please add uh, if I will, uh, will. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, sure. I'll, yeah. uh, I'll answer that. If uh, uh, yeah. I thought uh, maybe Alexander wants uh, wants to take that one, but it's all right. So um, actually, expected lifetime uh, differs uh, for uh, for mobile and um, and for um, uh, and for our uh, desktop ver uh, desktop games. Actually, that's uh, two different games uh, aimed at uh, two different audiences. So. At uh, one audience, uh, so audience of the desktop game has more time to play, more time to to get into the uh, all, uh, all the mechanics of the game and um, into all the logic and the uh, and the session is longer and uh, the mobile version is um, a little bit more casual. So there are two different teams working on the uh, on the game, and this is uh, a very um, um, this is an important part uh, of uh, uh, about like uh, about uh, our company, but. Um, answering the question about the lifetime. So um, we anticipate uh, for the desktop version uh, for uh, uh, the lifetime is uh, 1,200 days plus. And uh, for the mobile version is uh, it's uh, 900 days plus. So basically, um, uh, why is it so? Uh, actually, um, uh, we anticipate the, uh, uh, the, the lifetime to be even uh, more uh, than that, but we don't have uh, so much history uh, of uh, of the game uh, to to be able to say that the lifetime is going to be even uh, even bigger than that. So basically, uh, the uh, our um, uh, our uh, mobile version has been launched in, in the end of 2017, and uh, since we started our marketing activities and uh, acquired a substantial amount of player uh, players, when we can tell how long. The, that those cohort, cohorts still li uh, uh, can live. So we st still have some players from 2017. Those co cohorts are alive. So are the cohorts of uh, the players um, uh, whom we have acquired uh, at the start of the desktop version. Um, uh, so actually, we believe that we are going to, uh, to keep monetizing Hero Wars uh, um, uh, for decades, actually, it's not only about uh, monetizing uh, uh, monetizing those players. So we provide uh, valuable uh, content for those players, and they keep playing our game and uh, keep paying for some valuable items um, and for some um, valuable experience they uh, they uh, they have in our game. So we we are building games for decades and uh, not for uh, months and years. That would be uh, the answer to that. Yes, I, I would like uh, to add, uh, yes, uh, to add to answer of Anton. Uh, now, uh, five years ago, uh, some of us uh, game developers uh, thought that a uh, game could uh, live uh, maybe one, two, three years. And uh, there are a lot of games uh, with uh, such a lifespan. But uh, now we see much more examples of uh, of uh, games like uh, Forever franchise uh, with more than 10 years of lifespan. We can see now uh, Clash of Clans of Supercell, uh, World of Tanks, uh, Wargaming, and uh, there are a lot of, uh, of uh, games uh, which, could, uh, which could live uh, much more than two, three years. It uh, could live uh, seven, uh, 10 years, and we believe uh, that if you can uh, put uh, new content to existing your game, uh, people will play and uh, will pay in it. Uh, maybe uh, to the to the next uh, next uh, next few years uh, without without any restrictions. And uh, such such model uh now uh console and uh, pc uh game makers uh they already catched and uh, decided to put to the call of duties dlcs uh when uh, every quarter uh, they put new content and uh, sell it uh, like new content but this is uh, only only one game uh so uh now we believe that uh, games uh, good games uh, are platforms where uh, content uh, could be uh, could be put inside, and after uh, players uh, can play in it and uh, to pay in it. 
and uh, it could be to the future. Uh, oh, and, uh, mm -hmm. Andre, I'll just uh, just a, a few quick examples uh, on existing uh, like on on the market uh, in um, uh, on mobile market. Actually, we can see that uh, that the games uh, by uh, Supercell and uh, by uh, key, uh, by uh, King.com, uh, Candy Crush Saga, and so and um, uh, Clash uh, Clash of Clans and um, Heyday um, live for more than uh, ten years. Um, I mean, Heyday is uh, is eleven years old. The Clash of Clans uh, is going to ten, turn 10, 10 years uh, old next year, and they still um, keep uh, performing. They still engage more and more players. So the mobile market has examples. Um, uh, which are, are very big and the games uh, are not uh, ceasing to exist. I mean, they, they are, are, are getting developed and so the market has changed uh, uh, since, uh, since we remember the first Angry Birds. Thank you. Um, if I may, um, can you just maybe you know, come back uh, to the basics of your business and uh, discuss a few things that I, I'm, I'm pretty sure um, you know, people will be interested to know. Uh, why do you guys uh, focus on bookings and not revenue in your financial reporting? And what's the difference between the two metrics? Okay, yeah, uh, thanks for the question. So I take that if I may. Uh, look, first of all, uh, just probably a couple, couple of words on, on the theory of that and, 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 and how we do that in practice. So in general, the difference between the revenue and bookings is so-called deferred, uh, deferred revenue. So it's basically the bookings that we have. I mean, what are the bookings? Bookings are uh, kind of the real purchases generated by our users in, our, in the respective period, whatever it would be, just a quarter, a year. And whatever kind of uh, bookings of different types, like we also have a small portion of advertising uh, bookings and, and 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 revenues in each of the periods. And then, in accordance with AFRS as well as US GAAP, what we have to do is to defer a quite substantial chunk of revenues to the next period. And uh, for that to happen, uh, gaming companies develop uh, a number of instruments. Uh, in certain cases, very complicated mathematical models uh, like Kaplan-Meier, like all types of regressions and so on. And, uh, and, and those models and methods are different. Some companies would be using uh, just the method to amortize the revenue over the uh, lifetime of the each specific item. It's not something that we would usually see because it's very kind of time consuming and labor consuming, but uh, certain companies would do that. The majority of the companies would use the lifespan of the paying user as a benchmark over which the uh, bookings of the specific quarter are amortized. And it's also have a complicated type of features like usually the companies would be breaking down the uh, lifetime of the paying users by different kind of platforms and even would segregate, like for example, how we do, we um, uh, separately calculate the uh, lifetime of the high paying users, medium paying users, low paying users, and apply to kind of different uh, uh, chunks of, 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 of bookings. Some of the companies uh, would use just the lifetime of a game if, uh, if uh, one, uh, if a company is able to estimate that and, and prove that the estimate is reliable. So it's, it's a lot of judgment around that. And usually what's happening that uh, if you would compare two uh, very similar companies uh, with similar games and similar gameplay, uh, two different accountants and two, two different uh, like uh, uh, persons doing with FRS or USGAP make come up with fairly different judgment and estimates about the uh, lifetime of the consumers and hence revenues. And basically uh, as a response to that uh, very judgment heavy type of type of accounting, uh, basically the gaming world already, it's, it's I think uh, it's, it's already like over a decade uh, out there in the market. So the analysts and the, the uh, investors in this space use the bookings, which is basically something that is uh, less judgmental. So it's basically literally what we see in uh, in the reports that we are provided by all the platforms, like by, by Apple, Google, and other platforms we're working with. 
it's like the parameters that they see in their in the systems in terms of the real purchases made by by all the consumers in each of the platforms and second reason would be uh, so called the management view we uh, cause this parameter is something that is free of bias and is is not depending on any specific judgments we inside the company the management we use this parameter it is basically like the revenue deferral is not a, well, i mean uh, none of the companies i would say is, is able to estimate that let's say on a daily or weekly basis even monthly accounting for revenue deferral would be uh, quite a headache but what we need in our business to monitor basically every day and in certain cases every hour how we are performing in specific channel platform or geography and we can only do that based on the bookings kind of net bookings and many other measures so and we're using only that when we take our decisions and uh, whenever we talk about the profitability measure uh, again the one that we use inside the company it's it's also based uh, it's kind of EBITDA, but it's not EBITDA, it's what we call the management profitability measure. It's also based off the bookings uh, and on the book, but not on the revenue, simply because it's something that we can predict and something that we can, can influence. And again, we believe that at least the majority of the companies whose reporting we, we can analyze and which you can see the peers, we believe they do exactly the same inside the company. So whenever they add a management are taking the decision about the deployment of the marketing dollars about rolling out the games to a specific geography or platform they operate uh the bookings rather than revenues but that's much more simple and this is something that the company can uh, easily impact so that's more or less the background so sorry if it's uh, too technical but i think it's, it's fairly important for the guys to understand how that all works that's that's definitely important. Thanks, Alexander. Uh, we have a question from from the audience. Uh, Sergey, please go ahead. Yeah, th thank you, thank you very much for this meeting, and uh, I would like to congratulate you guys being public, again uh, being a, a game de developer public in two thousand twenty one. It's already exciting. Being being, being uh, from Russia, is it is it even exciting the most? What I really want to ask you, uh, if you don't mind, I have several questions from various areas. So first of all, uh, um, obviously there are two strategies on the development on the gaming. One is going to the, let's say, uh, DM, uh, U developed Europe, US, et cetera. Another one is going to Asia, which was a perfect strategy until probably midsummer this year for various reasons. So uh, what is your strategy? That's the question number one, where are you going? So which region you really focusing on and the second question which is uh, again at least what i what i what i've got the idea based on your website you are mostly focused on mobile gaming so how do you see your mobile gaming in terms of breakdown between platforms so apple android and do you see any significant changes in your financial situation related with uh, apple epic uh, negotiations because technically you are the guys who perfectly fit in this uh, in this, I don't want to say loophole, but in this specific case, when you, when you really can earn more in the foreseeable future. Thank you. Um, let me take this one, the first part, and uh, then I'll pass on to Alexander. Uh, Sergey, first of all, thank you very much uh, for your kind words. And uh, we are also super excited to be, uh, uh, to be publicly listed. And uh, we are the Russian game developers who are, uh, yeah, who, are uh, uh, who, who, who got listed on NASDAQ in 2021. And we're the first Russian company on NASDAQ. So yeah, yay. Um, so um, great uh, deep questions. So uh, talking about uh, our game development strategy, I would say that um, first of all, um, our strategy is to, cr to create um, uh, to create very um, uh, uh, games which are aimed, which are targeting very, um, uh, very wide audience. So basically we are not trying to uh, over segment and to, um, uh, and to make, uh, to make, you know, uh, to find a small fraction of the audience and to uh, to be specifically targeting it as uh, um, uh, as this was like the trend uh, for uh, maybe uh, still the trend for uh, for PC gaming or some, something like that. So basically, um, we have uh, we we are operating in RPG game, uh, which is which uh, um, uh, which is 
uh, of course, diversified across geographies, but most of the revenues, most of the booking, sorry, most of the bookings um, come, for, uh, come from, uh, from the Western part of the world. So we've got like 84% uh, of our bookings in 2020 coming uh, from, um, uh, from, uh, from Europe, uh, North America, um, uh, Lat Latam, but not uh, from, uh, and, and just 16 uh, coming from Asia. Given, so, and we operate an RPG, um, uh, which actually comes from, as a genre, comes from Asia. So basically, mm -hmm. we have created, uh, created the game, which, ha which has become super popular and has, uh, has received, so is very well, um, uh, well, um, accepted by the audience, but it is very well accepted uh, in, in, in the West, uh, given that, that most of the revenues for, for the genre come from Asia. And uh, we see that uh, st still um, we have uh, a lot of room uh, to grow there. Um, but, uh, and this actually, we, we, we like this. Uh, we like that, uh, that, that, that we operate something and uh, it becomes, uh, it, it becomes uh, very big and we still ha still have a lot of opportunities uh, to go uh, to, to another region and we have uh, we have uh, uh, made mm, some uh, so basically we are making assumptions so why is that and uh, uh, why has uh, uh, so why is our game um, uh, that popular in the west and and it shows um, like it shows very um, um, so preliminary, we, 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 have, we are very strong in Japan, we are very strong in, uh, in uh, Taiwan, and uh, we are uh, kind of, you know, we, we, have, we want to become uh, big in China and now um, uh, trying to get the, so we, we are in process of uh, negotiations with the partner to get the ISBN and to get published there. And um, preliminary tests show that, that this is possible. And this is what we want to continue in our uh, game development strategy. So we want to, to build um, games for both of the worlds, uh, with, uh, for the West, uh, which uh, actually more welcomes uh, the story, uh, more welcomes, I mean, the narrative. And, um, and very lovable characters and very deep kind of mechanics uh, for, uh, for, the Asian, uh, for the Asian players. Um, and um, given, so I hope this uh, answers, answers, answers your question. So we try to find the balance and create, create a game mm -hmm. that, will be, uh, that will be played in both parts of the world as we see um, our strong point in, um, in broadening the audience uh, for our games and not uh, trying to make it uh, as, uh, as segmented and as small um, uh, as, small as um, um, some other players, uh, smaller uh, as other players on the market. As uh, for, um, uh, as for uh, our mobile, uh, our mo so uh, our mobile as a platform and our aim at mobile. So basically we got focused on mobile in 2018 uh, and actually, it, it became it has become a winning strategy. But we originate from uh, from social networks, uh, and we have uh, we have uh, stayed very long, you know, um, on social networks, creating games for uh, Facebook and Russian social networks. And um, when Buchmann Brothers joined the company uh, in 2018, basically uh, they brought some expertise, and um, and uh, they um, and and the part of that was the focus uh, focus on mobile. Um, as uh, uh, as a um, as a, a as a platform with, which had uh, which has had become at the time uh, the biggest platform for casual players and basically uh, we believe that our um, our platform is the platform where most of the casual players uh, can reach uh, our games and we are building games for those platforms where the casual uh, where all the casual players are so basically now. Mm, Mobile and Apple and uh, and Android uh, are platforms with with uh, with an enormous audience. It's uh, uh, 2.7 billion, if uh, if I'm not mistaken, and it's estimated to grow to uh, 3.1 billion 2023. And so this is like a lot a lot of players. And um, um, and uh, if something changes, if there are any other platforms, if um, anything else. Uh, becomes popular, we of course will be looking at that uh, because we uh, came um, uh, here to, 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 to the public market, not just for one year, for two years. We want, uh, we want to, big, uh, to, to build uh, a big story uh, and we want to create 
uh, games uh, for decades, which will be played by uh, like all the all, all players in uh, like most of okay all players in the world uh, for for years and years to come. Okay, thanks, Anton, and I, I I'll comment on the uh, Epic versus Apple, uh, uh, which is kind of really uh, debated uh, quite quite he heavily in our uh, society. Look. Uh, First of all, about the short-term effects. Uh, quite honestly, just we 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 don't yet know how this will affect our short-term profitability, and based on the uh, on what other gaming companies said, just no one knows. So it's uh, it's primarily because it's just it's only. I mean, if you if you kind of monitor that, it's only just one uh, point out of ten or eleven. I think that has been ruled in favor of Epic. Uh, while the 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 rest the court ruled in favor of of uh, of Apple, and we're still kind of unclear how that uh, because this has to be implemented in a way in the platform and uh, how that 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 kind of alternative payment platform uh, shall look like from a user experience point of view is still unclear. So it might be not the kind of the easiest solution and and uh, obviously the last thing what we want to do is basically free, free, free out the users but something that is not really convenient so but it's uh on this kind of long term it's it's obviously a huge change it's uh though it's just as as i said it's only one of the uh uh, uh points uh that has been rolled in in favor of against the platform and this basically happened uh, to my mind, at least in our space, first time ever since uh, that universe kind of has been created by 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 Apple and 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 Google. And strategically, it's obviously, as we believe, it's the beginning of a change. And it's not only about the kind of the technical things about the payment, but it's generally about the 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 fact that the platform as well as we do they also compete for the uh for the users and for the dollars the users spend not only specifically in gaming but in any other uh apps that the platform we distribute and whenever the market gets saturated that that competition will we believe will make the platforms to behave much more flexible both in terms of the payments and and and, and many other things uh and the third what is important we have started to tackle that uh basically already more than a year ago we started to develop our own um, uh, desktop version uh, quite heavily and uh, as we just announced a few days ago uh, on our earnings call it's now one, one third almost one third of total bookings and this is and and this is still outpacing quite heavily uh they i mean we, we really were doing very good on mobile in q2 but still mobile was outpaced by far by the uh growth of book, bookings and desktop and this is the major reason why our uh, blended commission uh kind of went down so if if you kind of just take the commissions uh, uh it's it's now all the public data in our reporting in our frs reporting in 2019 then the blended commission would be around 31% of the revenue. And then it's contact, uh, constantly uh, ticking down and it's in Q4, I think it's just under 27%. So it's it's predominantly due to our own platform where we pay much less commission. Uh, so, and this, is, and this is something that also impacts the market in general. It's not only we have been really very successful in that, uh, but what we see, many other companies do that as well. So many other companies try to spill over, in a way, their experience from 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 desktop versions that are using on on social networks to their own platforms. And this is something that we believe makes the mobile platform to think more flexibly about. Because basically, what's happening, they're generally using the dollars spent by the users uh, out of their universe. Uh, we are getting directly those users interact with them directly only using kind of the tax agent and um, and the payment and it was acquired as a platform that's it uh and it's also a, a, a lot of speculations about alternative kind of advertising networks it's 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 all interconnected so it's also kind of how idfa look like it's it's many rumors and a lot of speculation i, I really don't want to speculate but we believe it will be hopefully a tougher competition from the standpoint of platforms uh also in this universe that will uh long in in the long term make our profitability higher generally speaking 
so I hope this helps. Yeah. Can, can I ask just one follow-up question? If you don't, okay, eventually too, but <laughs> trying to be as, as short as possible. So can you please uh, just uh, general trend tell us which platform in terms of your cash conversion cycle is better for you for your game? So Android, Apple, in terms of, I will say, where the uh, end user is spending more, generally speaking. Because that's 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 what eventually interesting to understand how really the mechanics of the monetization works. Um, and a, a second question um, is about the new platform in China. Again, China is a huge market, and we know there are some sort of tensions with Google, and they're still trying to roll out their own uh, app stores. Lots of them. How fast you really can uh, fit into the, these new app stores with your games for local players? Okay. Um, okay. So, Sasha, please continue. Yeah. So, I mean, look, uh, in terms of the monetization, look, it's, it's, uh, 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 I mean, in terms of the absolute numbers, obviously the desktop versions to the heavier version. So, you would see that the mm -hmm. basically the CPIs, the consumer acquisition cost per, per payer, and the average checks, and obviously LTV would be, uh, would be higher. Uh, I mean, that, that, that would be valid for any, uh, any, I believe, not probably for any, but I will for, for, for the vast majority of the games that has both the uh, mobile version and a desktop version. But it's not something that uh, really as important because we are looking at relative numbers. So we are trying to deploy basically our marketing dollars throughout all the platforms. And mm -hmm. what we are targeting is basically uh, the, basically the uh, LTV to exceed the consumer acquisition and to maximize the value for the company. And it's, uh, so from, from that point of view, really the ivory checks, uh, uh, it's it's a nice thing to have, but it's uh, on the other side, we are having like lower checks in iOS, but even lower in Android, but much more users. So it's it just, it's, it's it, and it's, it's also, it's, it's very uh, geo specific. So in certain countries, we would be having like predominantly uh, Android users in certain countries, predominantly iOS or just the, the larger share of iOS. And the uh, the monetization strategy and the uh, kind of marketing strategy would be different depending on what we have in each of those channels. So that's 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 uh, quite quite a lot of stuff under the hood just for us mm -hmm. to understand what is really efficient at this specific point of time within this specific channel. And it's yeah, it's uh, that's that's basically what we do daily on a daily basis to trying to maximize the efficiency of the investments. Thank you. And in, in, in terms of China, uh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, totally, uh, 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 totally agree with uh, with uh, Sasha. And uh, as for as for as for uh, China, um, we we uh, so the the news that came uh, came this uh, um, uh, this uh, summer um, about the the regulation. Uh, basically, we are not that. Um, uh, um, so basically, we don't we don't think that there is uh, a lot to worry about, as uh, the regulations um, mostly a are mostly aimed at uh, the younger younger audience and the players um, under fourteen years old, and as uh, our games um, actually target um, uh, audience which is uh, thirty plus. I would say so. Basically, um, this is. Uh, uh, I, I think we, we are not exposed uh, that that much uh, to, to to the regulation, um, and uh, we still um, believe that it, it is um, it is a huge uh, huge market. And the partners uh, whom we negotiate with uh, on getting uh, published in China um, um, also um, uh, also. Um, keep telling us not not to worry that much um as the, this uh, would like wind down um in in a bit of uh, in a bit of time so well, it's more about the question of the local partner rather than to adapt the existing game on the on the new platform oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah yeah so, sorry yeah totally um yeah, yeah. Uh, about that so we had mm. some some early tests before actually um uh, apple uh, has uh, um, has banned all the uh, all the apps without uh, the ISBN out of uh, Chinese App Store in 2020 and in 2019, 
And uh, those tests, so I mean, some marketing campaigns, and we had um, had um, uh, some uh, audience from China um, in uh, in Hero Wars, and we have uh, localized our localized, not adapted, right? Uh, so we have localized mm -hmm. our game to uh, to um, simplify them tra tra traditional Chinese. We saw uh, great numbers. We were super happy with that, and uh, it was uh, you know uh, uh, it was a pity to um, you know. Um, uh, to 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 lose our uh, our our players uh, in that in that market as uh, the app got got banned uh, after I believe first of uh, July uh, 2020, uh, but uh, those early tests um, got us an understanding that actually our game matches um, matches the market a lot, and uh, um, of course we need to do some uh, some uh, some adoption, um, but. It is not. Um, uh, it is not that hard. So it's not like creating another game. So basically, mm -hmm. the game itself, the game mechanics, the way it is built, uh, is well percepted by Chinese audience. Of course, there should be uh, some amendments made um, in order to uh, to uh, to to meet uh, some standards to 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 make sure that the game um, uh, runs smoothly uh, in the region and. Um, um, uh, run smoothly in the region, but it, it's it's minor, and we are already working uh, working on it. Thank you, thank you for the answers. Thank you. Uh, we have our next question in the chat room. Uh, you seem to spend a lot on marketing activities. Could you please share what percentage of total marketing uh, do you spend on Hero Wars versus other titles? Uh, do you need to invest in customer acquisition for Hero Wars as much as you did in the past, or do you mostly focus on monetizing existing customer base, including the 2017 cohort? Uh, Thank you for the question. Uh, I would uh, uh, I would answer that that of, uh, if you don't mind. So um, we spend around 95% uh, uh, of marketing budget now on Hero Wars, as this is uh, this is our flagship title and. Uh, uh, all the titles uh, are in progress, so we've got some uh, some tests, but we don't um, we don't spend much as this is still uh, as we don't we haven't yet reached the efficiency we are we are looking for. That's why we are not scaling that. Uh, and of course, uh, when uh, when we find the right balance um, uh, between the LTV and the customer acquisition costs uh, for uh, for Chibi Island, for example, and when we, we load, roll out our um, uh, other two titles, of course, the um, uh, the, the 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 share of uh, Hero Wars marketing um, will go will go down um, from ninety five percent as the yeah so do you need to invest in uh, in customer acquisition uh, actually we see the opportunity on growing um, uh, hero wars even bigger so basically as alexander said uh, we are looking for opportunities to find more players uh, at uh, effective cost so basically we're trying to expand um, uh, ex we are trying always to be expanding our user base so we've got very strong cohorts from uh, starting from 2017, uh, which still uh, bring us uh, revenues, um, uh, and uh, we've got a very solid. So basically, if we turn uh, turn off um, uh, marketing, basically we will be making still making a lot of money, and that will be all profit. But we are trying to uh, to spend as um, uh, as much as we can effectively to invest into marketing um, as as effective as we can um, so that we actually build a, a, a bigger and uh, a brighter future for hero wars in the uh, years to come so basically we, uh, we um, forecast um, uh, every every cohort that that we acquire and um, this is all uh, going to um, uh, to bring uh, to, to be bringing us uh, uh, revenues in uh, in two, three, four, and five years. Uh, Alexander, if you have something to add, uh, that will be welcome. I think I th yeah, I think it's all clear. That's that's uh, that's exactly right. And we really just uh, probably one thing: it's uh, 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 if if you like. 
uh, really look back uh, like 10 years ago uh, when when the industry was created in a way by 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 Zynga and a couple other companies then usually uh, the games were uh, really existing uh, in a let's say kind of uh, cash generating and money generating capacity for a few months and very rarely for just a couple of years and the whole uh, the whole race uh, in a way for for the profitability was about the pipeline of the games to be uh, completely ready for the launch with the kind of very deep gameplay and all the monetization mechanics in there and just you uh, uh, and your ability to kind of replace your kind of older title the new was 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 key and, and this is this is completely changed now we are witnessing uh, already several games that are uh, so-called forever franchise. It's a buzzword, but it's what, what's really happening. And if you, I just, I don't, I don't have uh, at, at hand kind of uh, the um, the recent reports, market report, but it's uh, uh, give or take like more than half of the revenues of total gaming market this year. They are uh, produced by the games that are five and more years old. Uh, this is the trend basically because the scale and the scale create scale and scale, success creates success because not many companies are really in a position to, to basically uh, uh, get the instruments, uh, financial, basically financial resources and, and uh, brain force to deploy like $30 million of marketing efficiently in a month. Uh, there's probably less than a decade of such companies, uh, gaming companies all around the globe and Nexus is one of those. For that to happen, you really have to build up over the course of the years not all, so first of all, people and knowledge, but second, a uh, hell of a bunch of statistics around how your users behave to be able to understand like day one and day seven, those kind of metrics that we use that the cohorts performs well, but also a lot of real statistical instruments across all the channels and geographies that can uh, be, uh, 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 be demonstrating a high, high level of predictability, how that all will, will evolve. And having said all of that, we're very far from uh, industry-wide benchmarks. So all in all, uh, again, uh, just correct me, Anton or Roman, if I'm wrong, but we have uh, achieved like 130 something million dollars download uh, million downloads worldwide so far for the five years of uh, history of of your wars, and this is like 10% uh, of what, for example, Clash of Clans achieved and many other games. So from the standpoint of audience that we need to cover it's still kind of miles away uh, until the saturation point. So that's why we're still in a high growth phase and we're trying to maximize marketing basically each day, uh, kind of analyze the data. Uh, so I would, I would just uh, make a slight comment about the numbers. Uh, we have uh, reported that we have uh, um, achieved 120 million downloads uh, altogether uh, on all platforms. Uh, and um, as and basically, um, we are we have made ten percent of what Candy Crush Saga uh, by um, by King Kong has achieved um, uh, since two thousand twelve. But uh, if uh, if we get compared to Clash Royale by Supercell, is just uh, one a third of that. So basically, we have a lot. So we, I mean, uh, we just would like to compare ourselves to something in the same genre, which would be midcore. And um, I mean. Um, give or take in the same genre and that so we have uh, there is a lot of room to grow in terms of numbers uh definitely just just it's not one third of clash of clans oh one tenth of clash of, of clash of clans just sorry thank you can i ask you something for for myself just um anton you mentioned an interesting thing that your typical uh customer your typical user is uh, 30 plus could you talk about a bit, a, bit, a bit more about the typical you know demographics they are maybe gender split and age split of your customer base and whether it's actually an advantage for you in terms of monetization who is spending more who is more sticky and so on and so forth uh yeah of course so basically our game um is i mean hero wars is played more by um uh, by male audience it's um like uh I would say 67, 68% to 33, 30, to 33 female. 
Um, so yeah, our, our core, uh, we, of course, there is uh, like the, 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 there are youngsters playing the game. Uh, there, I mean, youngsters over eight. We've got um, um, actually it's, there is uh, uh, there is uh, no sex violence and the other stuff. I mean, but uh, it's not it's not a um, um, a real time game, uh, which is uh, which are more uh, uh, which are more popular with with the younger audience. So that's why I'm saying that uh, that youngsters uh, uh, don't don't choose that because they prefer uh, they they still have um, a great um, great reaction. So they play something uh, with which is fast, and um, people um, after 25 uh, tend to. Uh, to, to choose something where you don't need uh, a very fast reactions uh, uh, to, to, to tap on your phone. So basically, our core audience is uh, starting 35 to uh, 45, I would say. Uh, so, uh, sorry, to 55, I would say. But of course, we've got, uh, we've got a, a big uh, audience, which is uh, slightly younger than that and slightly older than that. But like most of the play, uh, most of the players and uh, of the core paying audience are between uh, 35 and 55. Um, and in terms of geographies, um, I would say that uh, we've got um, uh, there, there is a split that we have reported in terms of bookings, and I would say it it represents um, it represents uh, our our audience in terms of geography. So we've got 16 percent um, uh, of bookings coming from Asia um, in 2020. This year, uh, the, this percent is is bigger as we uh, grew stronger, a, a lot stronger in Japan. Um, uh, there are uh, uh, there are a lot of players uh, from 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 North America um, from uh, from the U.S. So it's like thirty four percent, if um, around thirty four percent. There is a, a like a big playing uh, playing audience, of course, in Europe, um, and, um, and something around ten uh, percent come from uh, uh, from FCU countries. Um, yeah, not not more than that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Thank you so much. Okay, next question, please. We yeah, have a question from Vitaly. Mm -hmm. Vitaly, please go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, thanks for the call. Just a basic kind of question. Um, how do you see your revenue or I must say um, booking mix uh, per, per title evolving over the next um, three to five years? Okay, uh, let me take that. So it's it's basically uh, should be more or less uh, based on our current understanding in uh, in line with the forecast that basically Kismet has published uh, on our behalf uh, uh, in the filing uh, uh, like a couple months ago. So uh it's uh i i don't have the percentages at hand but it's generally we still would believe that uh hero wars would be core title uh for many years as anton said so 2021 2022 and even 2023 uh we would expect the new titles uh kind of uh, to take an increasingly larger share but it's it's something that obviously at risk and uh like uh we uh, so far we have basically included in our forecast those titles that we have uh, either launched this year, like Chibi or about to be launched. But generally speaking, we have a few more in the pipeline, and some of those titles will not be may not be as successful. Some some uh, will be successful. So it's generally uh, something that we believe will be a kind of uh, quite substantial impact our revenues. And uh, and the last uh, but not the least, we are in a very kind of uh, hot face in a way about uh, potential M and A, and we also may expect, though it's fairly difficult to plan and to forecast M and A, but uh, at least based on our uh, stage for now, we would believe that certain portion of the growth would come from from the acquisitions as well. Uh, again, having said said that, we are not really. Uh, guiding uh, for the few years to come. We're only kind of providing the guidance for just current year. So as soon as we finish 2021, we will uh, come out there with the new guidance for the 2022 and we'll probably give some more highlights 
on the split between the uh, core title and the new ones. Uh, but so far, this, this is the more or less the, 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 the overview on how we uh, believe our forecast will look like. Thank you. And if I may, another one. So a bit earlier, you mentioned three titles uh, for the current year in terms of your pipeline. Is, is that, like in general, is that a good number to assume going forward? Like, can you maintain that kind of uh, pace? Um, I, I, will, I will take that. Great question. Um, I do, we, we don't think that we are going to, make, uh, to be making uh, three new games a year. So uh, actually, um, we were planning, uh, so actually we soft launched Chibi Island, uh, the first game last year um uh in in the end of the year and uh, two new titles we are soft launching this this year so basically we and just you know we, we 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 as we got listed we were talking about three new titles that we've got uh but actually first one we was soft launched last year and those uh, uh the the two others are coming up now so basically uh, i uh, we we believe uh, that um uh, we'll be creating uh, one or two titles uh, internally at, at Nexters a year, um, and, um, and and this will be the, the part of our organic growth. As for um, and as and there could be, of course, some uh, some M and A's, but that's uh, that's another story. Uh, as for as for our internal releases, that will be one to two two titles a year, at most. Thank you, appreciate. And maybe just last one from my end. If you could shed some light on your M&A philosophy and uh, pipeline, if uh, you have any any deals uh, coming through, thank you. Yes, I, I, I would like, I would like this question. Thank you for it. Uh, yeah, uh, certainly. We uh, currently we are determined to become consolidator in the gaming space in 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 the Russian speaking community. We believe that uh, we are well positioned uh, for this uh, because uh, we have uh, access to public equity as currency uh, in transactions, which is important. Uh, uh, company uh, second uh, company founder country, culture because we are founders uh, still. And uh, we can speak this uh, strange language of uh, founders and entrepreneurs. <clears throat> Third, uh, we can speak Russian language, uh, and uh, this is important too for Russian teams. And uh, four, we have a strong MA expertise uh, with uh, Buchman Brothers from Playrix and Ivan Tabrin uh, from, from Kismet. And, uh, we have uh, three types uh, of M&A uh, transaction, which uh, we consider now. First type uh, is mergers uh, of large transformational deals uh, with uh, 1 billion plus uh, dollars of capitalization. With uh, companies uh, with uh, multiple products uh, bringing sufficient scale and uh, diversification to our group. Second uh, type is uh, acquisitions of mid, mid, mid sized deals, uh, maybe from uh, $100 million to $1 billion of capitalization, with uh, companies with predominantly single product, uh, strong revenue traction. Uh, with clear points of attachment of uh, Nexter's expertise, because we believe in uh, synergy. We like to grow uh, EBITDA uh, with a synergy. And uh, we have third type is uh, early stage deals uh, targeted at teams with uh, products at stages from MVP uh, and, and soft launch to early revenue traction. It could be from uh, zero, uh, to $100 million of capitalization. And uh, now we have a number of opportunities in each deal uh, type uh, on which we are working on now. Uh, so we have a QA in our pipeline in this uh, M&A strategy and uh, it's successful. We believe that uh, each uh, deal, uh, each great deal should get, uh, should get time. And in the nearest future, uh, yes, <laughs> we show you, we show you, but uh, not uh, not more scrutinizedly now. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, may I squeeze in another question? Last one from my hand. Okay, per perfect. Just just curious if you could 
give some uh, some details about maybe the size of your uh, game developers uh, team and maybe uh, how you compete uh, for for talent in terms of like how you attract and retain them uh, thank you uh andre do you want to answer that question i i, I would uh, yes i i would like uh i would like to begin only uh for your answer but uh we have a great culture uh and uh we would like to share this culture uh we have uh, <laughs> We have uh, uncompetable uh, conditions uh, in our work, uh, like a gaming company, uh, offices, uh, helpers. Uh, there are a lot of things uh, why uh, people uh, want uh, want to work uh, want to work with us, and uh, this is from the point of view of uh, talented employees. And if we are uh, speaking about uh, about founders about teams, about uh, independent uh, developers. Uh, we like uh, to go to profits uh, together with them. We don't want to get uh, their upside. Uh, we would like to put, uh, to put our efforts, to put uh, our help, uh, expertise, uh, knowledge uh, to company if they want uh, to reach uh, synergy and uh, to reach uh, very successful uh, successful results uh, together. And uh, they see it and they want it. Uh, so uh, for employees, we have uh, great conditions. For founders, we have great conditions. So An Anton, please. <laughs> Can uh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andre. So I, 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 I would, uh, I would like to to start with the numbers. We've got uh, more than uh, six hundred, uh, uh, six six hundred fifty uh, employees um, right now at Nexters, and uh, the number is uh, is growing every day. Um, and um, uh, so the the um, uh, the so game development teams uh, are. Uh, are pretty big, but those depend de depend on the title. So we we try to keep as small as we can uh, while we are uh, we are soft launching. So creating uh, creating new game and soft launching it, uh, so that uh, uh, the team is uh, very flexible, agile. It it, it can uh, you know um, uh, ideate a lot and. Uh, uh, is not you know over uh, like is not swamped in different kinds of processes which uh, uh, which uh, stop uh, st uh, like prevent this team from from creating. But as uh, um, as uh, the team grows bigger and as so uh, sorry as as the pro as the project grows bigger as the game grows bigger and uh, becomes um, a um, uh, a, um, a revenue generating machine. Uh, of course, uh, we we become um, it, the team uh, grows uh, with uh, uh, with the game. It becomes bigger. Uh, for example, for Hero Wars, um, two teams are around two hundred fifty people. I would say um, uh, all together. So, um, for example, if we compare it to to to, uh, to just um, uh, to, to to a team of a, of a new a new product, uh, it could be like fifteen people or something like that. Um, hope this uh, this answer the first part of the question and uh, as uh, I mean uh, about um, uh, about the numbers and as for um, uh, as for our um, uh, HR strategy uh, I would um, I would I would like to say I uh, like to, 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 to mention a few th few things um, game development uh, is a, a, like a very niche sphere and we don't um, uh, we don't compete with uh, IT giants uh, in Russia, uh, for like, for example, like Sberbank uh, and uh, Yandex, uh, for uh, for for top developers. As uh, you know, uh, we mostly so we mostly design uh, apps for uh, for platforms, and we try to use um, uh, native uh, native tools uh, of, of all sorts, uh, and to keep it as simple um, uh, as we can. Uh, yet, of course, we do need some architectures and uh, and that kind of stuff. But uh, it, it it's not uh, it, it, we we don't need them in hordes, so to speak. <laughs> we need the um, uh, and uh, we need uh, just uh, key, um, we need um, uh, a few people uh, of the of those kinds. So we don't 
um, uh, truly uh, clash uh, clash for, uh, for 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 employees with with Yandex, and uh, uh, this is a good good part. Uh, and uh, in 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 that uh, in that sense, uh, we are not uh, as much uh, uh, as much affected by by COVID uh, remote work, which actually gave um, gave a lot of uh, um, uh, gave a lot of exposure to um, uh, to employees uh, in 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 post uh, in post Soviet uh, countries uh, to to the um, uh, to the Western IT giants as well. Uh, but on the contrary, we have gained uh, from uh, from COVID as uh, as we now um, as we are now a, a remote company, and we can not uh, we can hire not only in the countries uh, where um, we, where we have um, uh, physical offices uh, in the countries and 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 um, uh, and cities, we now also uh, hire people. Uh, from uh, from all over the uh, all over the world and all over uh, post Soviet uh, post Soviet uh, space. And uh, uh, but but still, as the market as the as the gaming market and mobile ma gaming market grows, uh, so so does uh, the um, uh, so does the the shortage of uh, speci specific um, um, uh, specialists. Uh, for example, game designers. Uh, we anticipate that there will be shortage of game designers and artists uh, uh, um, who create games, and uh, we also. Uh, have a strategy there so we do um we do work um on uh, on raising uh, internal talent um and uh, we uh, also have equity hiring as part uh, as part of our strategy and uh, also we uh, do sponsor uh, all kinds of uh, courses uh, in uh, on different online educa educational platforms thank you so much guys and um, good luck on the road ahead Thank you very much. Hey, thanks everyone. I think um, I think it's been a great call. Uh, always great to have new companies on the market, and you know, thank you, thank you so much for being with us. I think we're slightly, uh, yeah, we we already exceeded our time limit, so I think I'll uh, I'll thank everyone, and uh, have a great weekend. Uh, if there are any questions, you can always contact uh, Nextters directly or us at Solar Capital. Uh, we're always happy to chat with, with you. Thank you very much.